You're tuning in to the Black Hollywood Live Network, featuring news, interviews, and commentary on all things Black Hollywood. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is Black Hollywood Live, Fashion 411. Featuring the week's roundup of fashion news. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host for Black Hollywood Live, Fashion 411. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Black Hollywood Live Fashion 411, your number one source on iTunes for all things fashion, celebrity, and style. I'm your girl, Courtney Stewart, in for Miss Diana right now, who will be giving us a little bit of who, what, where a little bit later in the session today. And I am your resident customer, shoeaholic, shopaholic girl that's always going to give you the consumer perspective on Fashion 411. And joining me today are two very beautiful and lovely ladies across the table. We have Ms. Hi guys, I'm your host Erica Garcia Rojas and I am your spicy Latina born and raised in LA who turned my love for fashion into a business, Rally Babe Apparel. I am your go-to source for all things business and fashion. And sitting right next to her is a very, very lovely special guest that we are so pleased to have in the studio, Miss Christian Petri. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for We're having me. So glad to have you this <laughs> week. And we will get all the scoop on Miss Christian a little bit later in the show. And real quick though, Christian, you're an actress. Just give a quick two second of who you are so everyone knows. Uh, yes, I'm an actress. I've got a movie that's out right now called Bounty Killer, um, action adventure fun stuff that we'll talk about later, but um, yeah, I'm awesome. here with you guys. Cool. cool. Welcome, Excited welcome. to have you. All right, so we're going to start out with a yep. little style scoop from Miss Erica. What do we have yes, this week? Yes, guys. So this week a lot was going on in the world of fashion and style. And first thing we're going to start off with is the Fashion Media Awards. So the world of fashion has another big annual event to add to its roster of award shows. And it's the first ever Fashion Media Awards by the Daily Front Row. It took place this week, September 6th in New York City in the upscale restaurant Harlow. Uh, some of the notable awards included Josie for Creative Director of the Year, presented by Jessica Biel. Heidi Klum being honored as TV Personality of the Year, presented by Tim Gunn and Stephen Gann of V Magazine awarded for Fashion Magazine of the Year and presented by Lady Gaga. So it was a super exciting event. There are a lot of people there. What do you guys think about that? <laughs> I'm looking at Lady Gaga's hair. I know, I yeah. too. <laughs> for those listening, right we now. have a picture up of Lady Gaga presenting and she was, you know, her classic avant-garde yes. style. So. Yeah, she's been doing the big hair a lot lately. She was on Watch What Happens Live this week and it was yeah. all hair for days. She gave so. Andy Cohen like a little makeover on yes, the show. an art pop makeover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's cool that they have another event, you know, honoring fashion in the world of fashion a lot of times. In fashion, you don't necessarily see the background people, like the editors, the editors and chiefs getting mm -hmm. nominated and awarded for things. So it's kind of nice that kind of the creative hands behind a lot of what we see visually of course. is being honored and awarded. Beautiful. So, yeah, 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 I think it's awesome. All right, so next up, we've got a very anticipated event that happened this week in New York Fashion Week, and that's a Philip Lim event. So one of the most anticipated events during New York during New York Fashion Week included an exhibition and shopping event held in celebration of the 3.1 Philip Lim for Target collaboration that's going to be actually launching yes. this <laughs> Sunday at Sunday, all Target stores. Sunday, get there. Yep. Uh, Target revealed some of its latest beauty offerings, including its exclusive pixie makeup line, as well as a new Philip Lim collaboration. Dozens of shoppers were grabbing as much as their arms could carry. So those who got invited <laughs> to this event were able to buy and they bought a lot, especially bags and men's shoes. Yes. Some of the notable guests of the event included Sonia Kashnuk and Katie Lee Joel, who are also fighting for their share of the Philip Lim Target collection. Uh, the prices, like all the collections for Target, are pretty low and the quality is really good, according to thefashionpost.com, who is at the event. Um, and like I said, the collection goes on sale on Sunday. I'm so excited. Yeah, how do you get invited to that event? I know. <laughs> no, I know. 
get them. And, sure. and you we know, have to wait in the lines on the 15th and yeah. they'll sell out like so quick. Ugh. It's going to sell. You know that like 50% of those people are going to be selling those things on eBay. Oh, of course. You know I, I, I'm not even going to lie. I want to get in line and get a couple bags. So do for I. Some potential eBay. One for myself, though. Yeah. But for some potential. One for me, too, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a target right down the street for me. And like, I, I've never actually gone on the day of. Me either. One of I'm the afraid. launches. <laughs> yeah, because I know the Missoni one was huge. It was insane. It was insane. And they were basically selling pairs of socks and tights for yes. like hundreds of dollars. <laughs> and um, so this one I'm considering going. I don't know about standing in line, though. I can't see standing I, I'm not, in line. Yeah, there. I'm afraid. It, it reminds me up. of like the, what is it, Black Friday or whatever yeah. after Thanksgiving. It's creepy. Like you the people are like, they have their carts. <laughs> they're like ready to bust down doors. So, but and this for, is a good one. Yeah, speaking of sample sales, for those of you uh, workout aficionados and who are here in L.A., mm -hmm. Lululemon is having yes. a huge sample sale in downtown L.A. And um, I had heard that actually someone told me that there's over a three and a half hour wait to actually get oh, inside. My friends are there right now. Are and they? they're like, there's just thousands and thousands of people. We're, really? we're thousands goodness. back in the line. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Wow. I mean, Lululemon is great. Yeah. I love their clothes. Yes. But they are really expensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'd actually heard just some insider scoop from being on the manufacturing end of things that they've actually changed all their manufacturing to go overseas uh, to China now. So really? for those of you that have had a lot of their stuff from before, you might notice a different change in quality because they're outsourcing everything out to China. Really? Yeah. It's still the same price. Well, I was going to say, it's going to change the yeah, prices. Yeah, from what I understand, it's going to be the same prices. And mm. there's a new kind of, there's a new store in town, um, Lauren and Jane. Yes. And they they're kind one. of trying to get into that space too, and we'll see if they can actually compete. But they're I don't not know. as exciting. I don't like Lauren and Jane as much. See, they're, I haven't they, really tried their stuff, yeah. but. They opened one near my house, and it's yeah. kind of, it's, 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 it's it's similar, but it's still not the like. Lululemon has a real special strength in the quality they of do. their products. As yeah. expensive as it is for workout, the materials are great. I know. And I, I think that Lorna Jane's trying to be there, but it's not quite it's there. It's not there. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens with the quality. And I hope it doesn't go down by being out in China. But No, especially if the price doesn't go down. I know. <laughs> that we will not accept. <laughs> I have a feeling that they're not going to lower their prices. They're, they, they're just trying to, not. you know, um, increase their margins. and. That's, it's a tough thing when you're when you're you have a fashion line and you're trying to decide where you're going to manufacture. Mm -hmm. I mean that was one of the decisions for for my line, Rally Bay. We manufacture here in LA, and we actually considered and we tried at the beginning to to do some of the manufacturing in China. And granted, it's a lot cheaper to do it out there, but you have such a lack of control mm -hmm. and the quality control there is just not there. So we played around with it and we decided ultimately to to manufacture here in LA. And it's all about giving back to your city and where you live and of all course. that and it's it's a it's a it's a it's a struggle sometimes but it's also a really good thing too and a lot of companies kind of deal with that but unfortunately most of them will do it overseas it's a lot cheaper yeah. and we're talking a lot yeah it's substantially lot cheaper, cheaper. Yeah, for sure you've already introduced your product as mm -hmm. a certain quality it's going to be hard for them like you said unless you want to drop the price or whatever we'll notice we've been buying these and yeah, wearing them so years, yeah it's so. true people will notice and i hope they can maintain that quality i don't know it's tough we, we had problems when we manufacture overseas granted we're not we're not the volume that lululemon does and they're probably going to have a whole operation set up out there and, and something, but we'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next up, we've got another collaboration, and this time it's Alicia Keys with Reebok. And she has done a collaboration with Reebok in the past. And um, her fall 2013 Reebok collaboration includes two sneaker wedge options. So the super popular sneaker wedge We're that's going on right in. now. And um, those sneakers, uh, you can find them at Nordstrom stores online and at Reebok.com. And her sneakers retail for $90 and $120. So for those of you listening, we've got a picture here of Alicia sporting one of her sneakers. They're like bright blue, cobalt, cobalt blue, blue with a black stripe, <laughs> sneaker wedge. Looks yeah. like leather, maybe? Yeah, it's hard patent? to tell. I don't know, though. It for $90 patent? and $120, I it don't know if it's actually like going to be leather. Leather. Yeah, I might see some kind of a pleather yeah. kind of fake leather type thing. I don't know. Who knows? They're jazzy. I like them. I like them. I think they're super cute. What do you guys think? I would buy, I think. Yeah. How about you, Christian? I think I would too. Um, they look comfortable, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. I actually kind of have a pair similar. They're not. They're not this brand, but they are pretty comfortable and cute. Yeah. I wonder how long this trend's gonna last. The sneaker wedge. This whole sneaker wedge thing. It's yeah. gone on much well, longer than go I expected. Everything. They've they've introduced it and then they put spikes all over them and done all kinds of stuff. <laughs> they gotta run out of ideas first. It's one of those things where I can see the sneaker wedge actually lasting for a long time yeah. because it's so comfortable. 
and people like the idea of having the height and all that and mm -hmm. you know trends get introduced and with celebrities and in the media and then it trickles down and it takes a while yeah it's like one of those things like when leggings got really in like a few years back leggings aren't going away i mean they're people still wearing them mm -hmm. people now like do different jet oh i do too <laughs> <Cozy>. i'm <laughs> guilty i'm Got guilty all the time you know and so it's like i think i feel like sneaker wedge is going to be the same thing and mm -hmm. the, the style of the sneaker wedge is probably going to evolve yeah. over the months and kind of reflect the seasons and all that but i don't really see it going away anytime soon yeah i kind of think that it's finally like girls get the chance to mm -hmm. still be cute and have their sporty look and not just have to be in tennis shoes yeah. so mm -hmm. i think you're probably right it's going to be around quite a while and I see I'm places, okay yeah, places especially like here, like in LA or mm -hmm. like in New York, places that are a little bit more kind of fashion trendy. It's gonna kind of stay and you know hang out there for a while. So All right. I think so. That's that's Keep what it I think. sexy and comfortable. Yep, sexy that's what and we like. comfy. <laughs> and uh, next we've got everyone's favorite high-end retailer. Um, well, actually, we'll uh, Coach actually. Um, Coach is getting a makeover. So, according to Women's World Daily, Coach is actively working on transforming its brand image from an accessories to a lifestyle brand. So, the goal is to elevate Coach with higher price points and higher end pieces. The current Coach customer pays on average about three hundred dollars for a bag, and the leather goods company will still be providing similarly priced options for that core customer. Customer, but we'll also be hi adding higher end pieces going upwards of twelve to fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, the coach makeover will also include an updated sleeker logo as plans as well as plans to redesign all of their coach stores. The first stores to see a facelift are going to be the 79 uh, Fifth Avenue flagship store in New York City and also its South Coast Plaza store here in Orange County, California. Oh, yeah. well, that's an interesting development because mm -hmm. I did. I don't know if we had the conversation here. I might have been talking to someone else <laughs> about how Coach is actually right now getting more of a profit, I guess, or more return on sort of the outlet yes. situation and the idea that Coach isn't really a luxury brand considered anymore to most people. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of interesting that now it's coming up that it's, they're yeah. going to make these leaps. I think so too because you're right. Coach has really in the past few years expanded um, its outlet retail stores. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the Coach outlets, as you know, those of you who've been there probably know, all the stuff manufactured for the Coach outlets is is or at the outlets is just for the outlets mm -hmm. there's a very small and maybe it's like 10 percent of the items in the outlet are actual coach items mm -hmm. and for those of you if you're curious here's a little tip if you're ever at a coach outlet the way you know that it's an actual coach item and not an outlet store item is that they have the little carriage the horse carriage somewhere on um, the item so yep. if it's if it doesn't have it, it means it's just an outlet type of an item. That's just like a little I didn't know that. specific for the outlet. A little tip. But yeah, I mean, Coach <laughs> has always been a, in the past for history, it was a very high-end luxury leather goods. That's mm -hmm. what it was known mm -hmm. for. And, it, and it, in some ways, I do feel that the brand watered itself down by doing that, by providing all those outlet stores. And now everybody can go out and buy a Coach store, a Coach purse. Yep. And, you know, they're cheap there at the outlet. They're not that expensive. They don't have the same quality. So I think the brand kind of did it to themselves mm -hmm. by watering it down a little bit. But now I think they're trying to revive it somehow. But um, And for those who follow Coach really well, the, the, the stock price, actually, when it grew like that, it went, it did go high and through the roof. Yeah. And the stock price of Coach and the large corporate um, kind of specifics of Coach did, they, they made a lot, they made a lot of, money, of money for right. sure by doing that. Which is why it's interesting now that they're trying mm -hmm. to change. And I wonder if that will, how that will affect actually the outlet situation. Yeah. Because if you're selling the luxury brand, unless they make it Coach Outlet is that line. And then like right. they Separate really need the to two. delineate the two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of brands do that. They A lot of large corporations do that. They'll separate their different client base. Mm -hmm. I mean, the company that owns I think it's the Ann Taylor company. I, I can't remember who it is, but they own like Ann Taylor and Taylor Loft. And I think they, I think they're the ones that also own the Gap. I'm not really sure, but the way they do it, they, they separate their stores and have specific 
different brands mm -hmm. reflecting that particular customer. With Coach, I don't know how they're going to do it because everything's right now is Coach. Yeah. So in some ways, they would you buy back into it? Like, oh yeah, no. Like I just, I don't. I feel like it'll never be Louis Vuitton again. Like yeah. that kind of level of. They're going to have to do, do some lot. work when it comes to social media and when it comes to giving it to, to very high profile celebrities. Like mm -hmm. if a celebrity walks around with a limited edition, you know, ostrich leather coach bag that becomes, <laughs> you know, one of 500, that'll elevate the brand yeah. in a way. But I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll yeah, see. We're not sure. Ah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see. What, Christian, you have? <laughs> well, I was like, well, uh, I, I agree with you. I was going to say they'd have to put it in the hands of some some pretty big celebrities, mm -hmm. you know, and just get people to want it that way, um, unless they have some great ideas that we don't know about yet. You know, marketing miracle. <laughs> That's what they do. Yeah, because I mean, company. we don't think any, because uh, they obviously have the leather bags that still exist in the higher end retail stores, like, are still nice, mm -hmm. but the, the name alone sort of just reads something else now yeah. and so it'll be interesting even though the the bag quality still exists it's still just not received that way so to make that change Switch. I'm not really sure how they can pull that they've off. been around this long I have faith they could figure it out yeah they've gone through a number of makeovers this this company and like they said they're gonna they're gonna make over all their retail stores and I wonder if that's gonna be limited I'm assuming it's limited to their actual retail stores and not their yeah. outlet stores so maybe what they're trying to do is separate the retail and the outlet and look and all mm -hmm. that stuff when you're in that environment in no. the store. Because the coach store has a very specific look to it yeah. and the outlet shares the same look. Hmm. So maybe they'll, they'll separate it that way. Let's maybe see. they should talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you some tips, Coach. Give me a call. Okay. <laughs> all right, and next we've got um, another makeover, kind of a little bit. Um, very high-end luxury retail or Neiman Marcus was for sale, or no one really knew it was for sale, but um, now it's been sold recently to Air, um, Area Management LLC and the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board. And they just bought Neiman Marcus Group for six billion from a group of investors. According to Women's World Daily, David Kaplan of the Eritz Management Company said, we plan on investing me meaningful capital and to, uh, I'm sorry, and to the business to ensure Neiman's long-term position as the unparalleled leader in luxury retail. This investment fits with our long-standing approach of accelerating growth in companies in the consumer and retail sectors. Well, alrighty so. then. <laughs> right? Yeah. Who knew Neiman Marcus was for sale? It, it probably <laughs> wasn't. It probably was there, and um, somebody was like, mm, somebody was like, I have some money that I need to place, like you know, six some billion wheel. dollars worth. <laughs> Just had and some it, in my back pocket. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was a pension fund. I think that that yeah, it was uh, some kind of yeah, the Canada Pension Plan. They investment needed an fund. investment. And they thought Neiman Marcus would be a good idea. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. Hopefully, they'll keep you know all the same things we love about Neiman. Like we were talking about a few weeks ago, the upcoming um, the holiday collaboration that they're uh, going to be yes. doing with was it Kanye I believe or no, no it wasn't um, it was um, we're both blinking that's okay it was, uh, <laughs> it'll come back who's Beyonce with Jay Z Jay Z it was a Jay Z with Neiman mm, it, yeah was it. Brain dead right now okay. but we will tweet Somebody about it later. Google it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to pull that up later. It was some rap. Rap artist, hip hop some, artist yeah. that was doing. I can't remember. It was I feel like it was Nas, but maybe not. It's no, okay because his was something separate. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think it might have been Kanye. Or we'll Jay -Z. figure that out. Yeah. We'll okay. Figure that out. All right, we'll, we'll figure that out and get back to you. Or just listen to one of our shows a few weeks ago where we talk all about, about it. Because <laughs> uh, Neiman Marcus has this amazing holiday collaboration every year. Last year, I think it was Disney, Electric Disney. Yes. And then it was with the Lady Gaga one year. So they go all out, they go crazy. And I hope they keep on doing that because it's That's a lot what of fun. we love. Of we course. love that. So, all right. And um, last but not least, we've got another collaboration and we've got Catherine Melandrino has a new collaboration with Kohl's that's going to be coming out. Oh, so right. this will be really exciting. Um, if those of you are following us um, online or actually I'm going to announce this too. We're going to have a, an Instagram Our account. Instagram. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second when I'm done with this. But um, we have pictures here that kind of represent some of the items that are going to be in the collection and they're more dark, you know, kind of reflecting Catherine Maladrino's look, um, kind of like the dark leather look and an uh, like kind of European inspiration. So it's going to be a really cool collaboration, especially with Kohl's. 
Yeah, I mean, because so far they've had, I think in Coles they've got the Lauren Conrad line, mm -hmm. they had Jennifer Lopez did yeah. a line, and I know they work with like Daisy Fuentes still. And Vera but, Wang. And Vera Wang is and, in there. Um, um, there's um, a there's another um, the pop most, star, what's her name, Blonde, Avril Lavigne. They've had her line mm -hmm. in there too, so they do a lot of different ones, and this is a, another luxury step because yeah. that, that's a... I think that's a great one. I think this is a good one because in the past with, with Kohl's, they've always done it more with celebrity collaborations yeah. and less so with designer collaborations. Mm -hmm. It looks like they're kind of taking the lead from Target and doing something similar in this regard. So I'm excited to see what they do. Yeah, everything I own is black pretty much. So yeah, right. <laughs> it works out. Right up my alley. Yeah. Blacks and navy blues and this, this Eiffel Tower on the back of I this know. dress is very interesting. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I guess I'll, I'll talk about it right now, but we just... Um, we just came out with a new Instagram for just for BHL uh, Fashion, Fashion 411. And we have the pictures that are going to be on our Instagram. For those of you listening, follow us on Instagram. What is it, Courtney? It it's is BHL Fashion 411. All right. Check us out. Yes. Like our pictures. Like our pictures. <laughs> and Comments. All the pictures that we're going to be referring to here during the show are going to be on Instagram. So we know that most of you guys listen to us on iTunes. You can see us on YouTube where you'll see the photos. But if you're listening to us on iTunes, Follow us on Instagram, and you can follow along with all the pictures that we'll be referring to. Of so. course. All, all right. right. Well, thank you, Miss Erica. And that guys, we have Deanna coming in. Okay. Yay. Come on in, Deanna, because we're going to talk about some fashion at Fashion Week now. Hey. Got our favorite uh, week of the year. We've got uh, New York Fashion Week, and it's uh, there are a lot of exciting things that happened this this past week. Oh, my um, girl. Yes, and Deanna is here in the house. Welcome, I'm fashionably welcome. late. Yes. <laughs> Thank she's you. fashionably late, and she's going to talk all about her style scoop segment. Uh, well, I'm talking about all about who, what, where. Oh, who, what, where. <laughs> I just got done with style scoop, and she's going to talk I about know. who, what, where. Yes. Well, you guys, we are obviously we're in full swing with fall, and I thought it'd be a great idea to, over the next couple of weeks, let's really talk about what these big fall trends are because yes. – there are tons of them. So first up, I, we're going to talk about four today. So first up, uh, we've got over the knee boots, mm. and this is our <laughs> friend, Everywhere. our friend and friend in our head, friend of the show, Beyonce. She <laughs> is sporting them, but this is a huge, huge trend right now for the fall: leathers, suede, fringe, like with different like. Uh, uh, just hardware and adornment and the pictures that uh, we see right now that's a boot from Pucci and then from Tom Ford and then Philip Lim and I think what's great about over the knee boots you can even see with the way Beyonce is wearing them you don't have to wear it with something that's quote-unquote fall like you know, she's wearing it with an easy, you know, springy like dress so I think it's a great way to transition you know from from uh, from summer into the fall with a look like this. So sure. that's one hot new fall trend must have are the over the knee boots. I love that. I love trend. the suede ones, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They look amazing. My and husband always wants me to buy these, but I'm like, where <laughs> am I gonna wear it ever? Where am I gonna wear it? But I, I would wear that. We're, yeah, I love that. California, so it's like the loose, the lightweight dress, like yeah. the boots is a cool that is great trend. Yeah, material. and it's so I, I think it's a lot easier to wear than the most than the average person realizes. You know what I mean? It's just you pop it on with a dress, with you know, some riding pants, jeans means very easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a type of item that does take getting used to learning how to wear mm -hmm. because people see it and they get intimidated mm -hmm. by an mm -hmm. over-the-knee <laughs> boot. I mean, i kind of talking about husbands. My husband calls them hooker boots. Um, <laughs> you know, and... Now, now. Yeah. <laughs> Julia Robertson. <laughs> um, and so it takes kind of something getting used to, and I think the more we see it, mm -hmm. the more we see celebrities creating different looks with it, it'll be easier to wear because you automatically assume you're going to have to wear, like, short shorts or a short dress which that's the way to, to, to do it but if you see the way Beyonce is wearing it she's wearing it with a flowy dress mm -hmm. it is short but it's not tight it's flowy it's loose and I think that's gonna be the way we're gonna see it with the kind of a, sh a short dress flowy but exactly. also you can throw that over jeans and mm -hmm. leggings which yep. is mm -hmm. a really hot look and I think that's gonna be a really cool look I like what you said about fall. the riding pants that yeah it's super just cute super easy to wear and over the knee boots just happens to be one of like about seven different fall shoe trends. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of things that are in there are stacked in black heels, open toe boots, uh, 
the whole little schoolgirl loafer, but this is what I'm highlighting today for a fall trend because there's a ton of stuff. What's interesting about these kind of boots, mm -hmm. and I've heard this from like women of just different shapes and sizes, is that it does get a little bit difficult when it comes to fitting, especially like over yes. calves and things like that. Yeah. And I know that with, you know, for a long time, the knee high boots were so in, and mm -hmm. that was a big issue that a lot of women had in styling women and everything is that mm -hmm. they have, you know, the calves and, you know, a lot of the lines make the, 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 <laughs> the boot doesn't fit over the calves. So right. I'm interested to see how that's going to work here with this, you know, up to well, the knee. I will you update know you because I have calf problems <laughs> and I will be buying some this fall. <laughs> and interesting that you say that because a lot of companies now are in, you know, infusing like elastics mm -hmm. and lycras in boots, you know, so just specifically for that uh, problem. And suede is also a material that's a little bit more forgiving yes, than structured yeah. leather. Mm -hmm. So it's going to like give a little for people who do have those issues yeah. with their calves. And there are some lines that are so, actually sizing for yeah. calves. Yeah, so they are. Which is awesome. Yeah. So, Especially yeah. here in the U.S. Because yeah. uh, U.S. Is, 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 you know, it's known that the women are a little larger than yeah. Yeah. Big legs in other there. countries. And I have the opposite problem. I have chicken legs. So <laughs> I, I like a lot of boots are too big for I'm me. I'm with you. The yeah, they so too. Yeah. baggy. Yeah. It's, it can go either way. Yeah. All right. I let's have that let's yeah. check up with the next trend for this fall. We have, uh, we've seen it before and we've talked about it a lot on this show, is leather. Leather is back in a huge way. And in this picture, we see Zoe, Zoe Saldana. She's wearing Gucci. But just so everybody knows, leather in terms of garments, pants, they are skinny pants. They're a little baggy, like at the very end. <laughs> they are uh, five pocket, like denim type styles. In addition to, we're seeing a lot of leather skirts and a lot of leather jackets, but leather is a huge, huge, huge trend for this fall. And the nice part about it is not only are we seeing real, actual animal leathers, but if you are price conscious, a lot of vegan leather products are out there and they look just as good. You would never know in a million years that it wasn't made out of leather. And it's a little, you know, it's a little better on the on the pocketbook. But um, this is a huge trend that I can't wait to buy. Now that it's no <laughs> longer think? summer and we're tired I know. of the summer leather. <laughs> we're, we're, we're tired of the summer. As it's 95 degrees outside. Yes, but they were still wearing leather in the summertime. Still wearing so leather. Leather but. in the fall is always sexy and it's always classic. So I love that it's taken on so it. many faces for the fall. And not only that, I think if you get the right shape, you're going to be able to keep this in your closet and use it over time. It, it's it's going to become a staple in your wardrobe, just like a pair of blue jeans, I think. So that is trend yeah. number two. Leather always seems to be a trend, though. Yeah, like, I've, always. Like, in fall, like I feel in. like it's just always there. I think this is a little different to see, like, the baggy, like, the baggy pant kind of look. But I feel like if you buy a leather item, it's one of those things that'll just never go out of style. Right. You know, unless it's like a hot pink leather type, you know, <laughs> yeah. skirt or something. You know, I, I think one of the major differences what I'm seeing this season though, because you're mm -hmm. right, like we do see leather, like it every fall. You, you see a hint of it every fall and winter, but I think the big difference is you're seeing it retail everywhere. It's at mm -hmm. high, it's at low, you know, it's at H and M, it's at Forever Twenty One, it's at every price point. So mm -hmm. I think when you start to see it saturate the market like that, you know it's a huge no. idea yeah. and they want you to buy it and have yeah. it. So yeah. and it's in true. every article of clothing. Oh, it's yeah. tank every tops, mm -hmm. it's skirts, it's mm -hmm. you know, dresses, it's everything, not just the pants and a nice leather skirt mm -hmm. or a jacket. Yeah. So mm -hmm. so it's cool. Put that on your shopping list, ladies. Um, next up, uh, fall trend, we have hats. Now, okay, we're in Southern California, so it's typical that we see people all the time, you know, especially guys like wearing little beanie hats and stuff like that. But it was all over the runways. There are a couple different shapes uh, that stand out. In this picture, we've got Zoe. Oh, what's her Zoe name? Kravitz. Zoe Kravitz. Zoe Kravitz. Zoe. <laughs> And Zoe Zoe's. Kravitz, and she is actually at uh, a Fashion Week event in New York City from last week. But the big hat ideas are the little beanies that we see in the middle. Uh, and then you've got uh, this little street style fashion, which I love this lady's picture. She was at a New York Fashion Week event, and she's wearing a fedora, so those are back. And then on the very end, it's kind of like a felted, floppy fedora, so those are also in. And that's also another street style picture from New York City. So this is what people are wearing on the streets now. Hats are big. It's not necessarily, I think people associate like wearing a big floppy hat with the summertime, you know, mm -hmm. especially like on the end. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really easy to integrate something like this into your wardrobe because it comes off a little bit more boho and downtown and eclectic whatever not my style particularly <laughs> but um it's a big trend right. big trend 
Uh, and then finally, uh, I'm going to round out our fall 2003 trends for this week. It's shades of green. So uh, we see Eve. Eve is actually at the Catherine Malandrino show. Now, mm -hmm. you guys just got finished talking about um, her new Kohl's collection. And this is Eve and Catherine Malandrino. And this is a Kelly Green dress she's got on. But all shades of green are supposed to be really, really big this fall. So whether mm -hmm. it's, you know, like a moss army green, you've got the Kelly in the middle, you've got uh, the lime on the end. There's a little bit of something for everybody. And I think green is one of those colors, no matter what your skin tone is. You know, it's in that turquoise family on the color wheel. It it's, it's kind of works with everybody, but you have to pick the right shade. Mm -hmm. So, um, the right undertone. Yeah, you have to put the right <laughs> undertone because, you know, there's a little something for everybody. You know, redheads, black girls, white girls. But um, green is a very big idea for that, this fall. That makes sense because green, I think emerald green was the, the Pantone color of the year. Exactly. So, I mean, uh -huh. it makes sense that they're bringing it in into fall. I think green yep. can be a little bit hard to wear. Mm -hmm. The lighter kind of Kelly green colors. Mm -hmm. um, I like, I personally like a lime green and like a dark olive green. Mm -hmm. I think those are more flattering to certain skin tones. Yeah. Um, and it's sometimes hard to match when you're trying to pair an outfit. Yeah. It looks sometimes stark when you've got that like... Kelly Shamrock Green, uh -huh. you know, and so it's like green is one of those colors. I think it's, it's like an olivey color is nice, but it's a little tough. Yeah. Well, well Eve's wear. pulling that green dress off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it looks, yeah. it looks amazing. <laughs> she did fantastic. That looks amazing. She looks yeah. great and love her in general these days. So go her. So that's a little taste of you know our fall 2013 fashion trends and what everyone needs to put on their list and we'll have more for next week Yay. but let's see here are we ready to play a little game yes sure. get to know our guests our wonderful guests so just for all you viewers out <laughs> okay. there uh whenever we have a guest in the studio we love to play a little game to get the to get to know them better and for you to get to know them better as well so we like to call it fact or fiction so are you ready uh, do I get an answer sheet? <laughs> <laughs> you, your answers are up here. <laughs> you already know the answers. All right, I'll get started. Yep. Okay, so Christian has only one brother. Um, this is false. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I have a brother, Adam, who is younger than me. I also had a younger brother, Seth, who passed away when he was younger. Um, and I've had a uh, plethora of foster children come in and out of our house that, you know, brothers and sisters oh, wow. awesome. that way as well. Um, I also have two stepbrothers. Wow. Uh, we, have a, we have a pretty big family. Wow. <laughs> we add cool. to it all the time. So, <laughs> Where are you from? Show up at Christmas. Um, Tennessee. Oh, well, wow. I grew up in Tennessee, originally from Louisiana, but I grew up in East Tennessee in Cleveland. Oh, yes, right. there's a Cleveland in Tennessee. I'm from Ohio. Oh, Cleveland, Tennessee. Yes, exactly. Oh, I've never heard of that. I have oh, friends that have known me for years that are like, I had no idea you're from Ohio. I know. <laughs> I'm not. That's no, so funny. That's Tennessee. So I'm sure sharing the bathroom was kind of difficult. It was. It was. <laughs> Created right. an issue. We had a schedule. Good sharing. All right. Do you still keep in contact with, like, how many did you have a, total? A lot of them, yeah. Um, there were, you know, close to 50. Um, not all at one time, obviously, over the course of quite a few years in and out, but uh, there's a good handful that I wow. still, you know, call my, my sister and we keep in touch and my oh, mom cool. sees them all the time, you know, mm -hmm. so are one they, of them. Wonderful. Are but, they out here in L.A. at all? No, no. Everyone's uh, kind of spread around the southeast, you know, Tennessee, Alabama, Indiana, things like that. That's really cool. Very cool. Yeah. Let's see, see here. All right. Next up we yeah. have Miss Christian. You are a licensed esthetician? This is true. Oh, wow. That's Something a not a lot of people face. know. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> I got my esthetician's license after I had my daughter. I was a single mom, so I kind of wanted to be prepared to be able to provide for us, you know, if this whole acting gig didn't work out. <laughs> 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 and I still got it just in case. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's see. All right. Christian is single and ready to mingle. Who's asking? <laughs> True or false? I'm, I'm married. It's false. Um, I'm married to a wonderful man named Robbie Davis. Um, we have a little girl, Presley, Aww. who turned eight yesterday. Aww. So, um, you know, I love mingling, but I'm definitely not single. <laughs> um, All right, we have right, one go. more. Oh. Is it my turn? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Christian stars oh, in good. the movie Bounty Killer with Gary Busey and Eve. 
This is true. I was happy to see her. Right oh. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It was really fun, and um, both of them were just great. She's the sweetest person. I asked her, actually, when I met her, I said, do people see you and say, you know who you look like? Because she just is so sweet, and her demeanor is so different than what you expect it to be. Like, people mm. can't see her and think that she is actually Eve, and she said all the time. Cool. People say, you, re you remind me of Eve. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. You got it. How is it like working with Gary Busey? Well, it's a good <laughs> 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 Took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> I, I really want to tell this. Wait, picture, picture what you think it would be like. <laughs> That's exactly how it's oh. That's exactly it. It's fun. Um, you never know what to expect or what's going to come out of his mouth next. He's he's really, really interesting and um, has a lot of stories. Yeah. Uh, super fun. It's it's hard to, to focus on work when he's there because yeah. you just kind of want to sit and, be, uh, and listen to him all day long. But What are those phrases that he likes to say? He does you know? acronyms. Buseyisms. Yes. 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 Buse yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he'll, he makes them up all day. And some of them are actually yeah. quite genius. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing it for a little while after we worked with him uh, trying to come up with my own but none of them were as cool as what he could yeah <laughs> sometimes they do make sense <laughs> in a strange way that's interesting so is he back in acting now because I know he was on yeah. Celebrity Apprentice yeah I mean I, I guess he's working sure yeah, mm -hmm. he's yeah. got a sitcom on TV on cable right now and he's doing great good, so good for him tell us about the movie though yeah. what, what can we expect from bounty killer oh, and your it, character. It's an adventure. Um, this movie is, it's really lighthearted. People keep saying it's the, the bloodiest feel-good movie of the year, and it really is. It's really violent and gory, but fun and lighthearted the whole time. <laughs> I know, it doesn't mix. It doesn't seem it like doesn't. it mixes. Yeah. But um, people that don't even like this type of, this genre of film usually, um, like my mom, per se, mm -hmm. uh, watches the movie, and you just walk out feeling good at the end somehow. Henry, our director, um, Henry saying he manages to balance kind of everything, and you have fun, and you go on this wild adventure, and uh, it's 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 you'll see. <laughs> cool. And when can we expect to, to well, see that? Well, it's um in, it hit theaters last week. Okay. Select theaters. Um, it's also on video on demand. Oh, okay. And um, we have a graphic novel as well on Amazon Ooh. that Ooh, is it goes hand cool. in hand. Um, people a lot of people think that the movie came from the graphic novel, but they were actually both. Oh. put out at the same time, all by oh. our genius uh, director, Henry. He uh, drew the whole graphic novel and everything, so. That's Very pretty cool. Yeah. Were you at Comic-Con this year? Yeah, we were at Comic-Con the last two years mm -hmm. um, with it, and then this year we were kind of double booked on some things and didn't get to go, but um, it was, have you been? Uh, I haven't, no. Wow. I've heard about <laughs> have it. You guys I've, I've been before, I've been yeah. Oh my past. goodness, it's yeah. sensory overload. It's yeah. the coolest place. I just, mm -hmm. I thought it was so awesome being there. Uh, but that's definitely the the fan base that we have. Mm -hmm. yeah. are, well, that's the next question was the comic book fans are a very special yes. breed, so to speak. Have you had any interesting encounters with them? You know, they're fun. Like, I wouldn't trade our fan base for anything because they're so excited and just on board with us. Um, they appreciate all the work that's gone into everything that we did. And for the amount of money that we had and the amount of time that we had to do it, they, they really can take all of that into consideration when watching the film. And um, they just, they're... Uh, they're fun. They jump on board with us, and it's like family uh, immediately, you know, the people that we meet. So, very cool. I would love to know, like, what is your dream role, like, that you would love to, <laughs> you know, play? Let's see. I said the other day I was going to change my answer to this because there's <laughs> something I really wanted to do, but I can't remember now. Um, I, I, I love Mary Death. I mean, knowing this character now, mm -hmm. um, if someone else had played her, I would have been like, oh, man, I wish I could have played that role. Mm -hmm. um, but I've always wanted to do Priscilla Presley. I, I love Elvis mm -hmm. so much. Obviously, my daughter's name is Presley. Getting a little bit old for that now, <laughs> maybe, because I know look, Priscilla. You kind of look like her. her. Yeah. 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 Look, with yeah. enough hair and makeup, anything's possible. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. That's something that's always been in the back of my head. Just to be any part of his story oh, would wow. be a dream come true because I just think he's phenomenal. And what about like dream people to act with? Ah, um, there's a lot of them. Like top I've, three. I've always uh, said I'm going to work with DiCaprio. I would mm. love to work with Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't know any woman who wouldn't. Oh, yeah. But there <laughs> are other reasons. You know, just yeah. as an actor, um, I think he's amazing. I think Kate Winslet is uh, amazing as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm not tying the two with Titanic. That's <laughs> I did introduce my daughter to it recently, and she loved the oh movie. Gosh, uh, yeah. We fast forwarded through a couple. Yeah. Of parts. <laughs> <laughs> see me in the car. Yeah. Um, and Meryl Streep, I, I, oh, I think it would be brilliant. amazing. I think yeah. I could just learn so much just from watching her as a person, mm -hmm. you know, much less as an actor. So there's Very three. Cool.
Oh. Is there any projects you're working on right now or anything? Because right now, we've been really promoting Bounty Killer and putting every bit of energy into that. Um, and I've got a couple of scripts in my possession right now that mm -hmm. I'm looking at and trying to decide what the next step's going to be. But um, we're just kind of having fun and enjoying this ride for a minute, and then we'll move on and have some more fun stuff to introduce awesome. to everyone. So that's cool. Okay. That's and exciting. since this is Passion 411, <laughs> what is your favorite? costume or object that you had to wear for Bounty Killer and what is your favorite piece of clothing in your closet? Oh, my favorite, um, well, I love everything about Mary Death's outfit, uh, minus the fact that my bloomers were shown the entire movie. I don't know whose idea it was to have her wearing a skirt, even because she's a fighter. <laughs> um, I love the outfit at the end, the black outfit that mm -hmm. our costume designer, Dan Salon, put together is um, it's just hot. <laughs> it's so great. I, I want there to be a sequel just so I can wear it again for a whole movie. And it's short. It's not a skirt, which is genius. Um, her boots are fun, too. I mean, they're just straight go-go boots, boots, but they're spurs. And so when you walk around with spurs on, just the cha-ching, cha-ching, yeah. cha-ching. And it's everybody like takes it seriously. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like so <laughs> um, and in my closet, you know, I'm. it's crazy that I'm on this show because I'm so not really fashionable. My husband dresses me. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Pretty much every day. Well, you <laughs> look cute. So, <laughs> he, he's, um, he's got me all of these pinup girl clothings from Pinup Girl Boutique yeah. in, uh, oh, yeah. in <laughs> Magnolia, which I love. It's, if I could choose my kind of style, it would definitely be like that. You know, I, I just love the pinup kind of era, and I think it's classy and doesn't show so much. You know, it's, mm -hmm. um, it's beautiful and sexy and still classy at the same time. So um, I love those girls. They've been dressing me for a few weeks now, and sure. they've been doing a great job. Cool. Right. That's Very awesome. Nice. So what's one thing that your fan base doesn't know about you? <laughs> well, oh, let's see. With all the interviews I've done lately, I think I've pretty much spilled my entire life. <laughs> Something they don't know about me. Um, oh, I wish you had told me this question before so I could have thought about it. Uh, <laughs> it's better yeah. when it's on the spot. I know, oh, right? You don't have time. I'm trying yeah. to think, what haven't I been asked? Uh, um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank That's you. That's perfect. You know, maybe, uh, I guess if you've read my, I'll let it finish. <laughs> I got it. Uh, um, I think if, you, if you've if you read my press kit, you would know this, but I grew up um, in the country shooting guns and, you know, hanging out doing things that I know a lot of people out here uh, are sometimes a little uncomfortable with when it comes to <laughs> weapons and such. But yeah, we just would sit on the back porch and, and, you know, shoot things in the afternoon and play around with target practice and stuff like that. So... I kind of grew up that way that a lot of people might not know that about me. Um, so there. So are you yeah. a good shot? I, I am. I All am. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We would even line up like bottle caps across the fence in the backyard and use a BB gun and knock off little bottle caps. So you learn to get pretty precise when it's such a oh, small wow. target. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So right. note to your fans, no one should mess around with you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have a, a carry permit. She's not so packing. I don't keep one on me. <laughs> Well, there's ranges out here in LA. You oh yeah, know? we go we yeah. go to one out in Sunland actually, mm -hmm. and they have fun you know uh, little metal um, th discs and stuff that you can hit, and so you can hear it clink from clink far away, it. which is fun. It's really fun. Cool. Well, it kind of makes sense, and then you're in the movie uh, Bounty Killer, <laughs> yeah. right? Didn't have to train on that part. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So speaking of a little killing and being a good shot, let's we have the segment we like to call Hot or Hot Mess. Yeah. So <laughs> we are going to pull up a few uh, picks and. And we all decide, you know, hot or hot mess. Yeah. All so, right. who's up first, Erica? Okay, guys. So, first, we've got Naomi Campbell. And she is seen here this week at the Novak Jukovic Foundation New York dinner on September 10th. And uh, she's wearing a bandaged black cutout dress with revealing slits on top. And she's rounding out the look with a bob, little bob bang haircut and to remind you guys go on to instagram if you're listening so you can follow along and see the pictures um that we're referring to what do you guys think I, hot mess okay here's what i'm gonna say <laughs> i think i mean all right we all know Someone naomi first. Na <laughs> naomi campbell is a supermodel she's been around for years you know magazines and men i and feel men. like <laughs> and, and throwing cell phones <laughs> um i think this is the first time i've actually seen her like red carpet or something like this she just looks sad she's not posing she looks kind of like you know i just lost my dog i don't know she just looks really sad and to me because she doesn't look confident it's not really doing anything for what she's wearing. And and then I'm looking at her shoes at the bottom. It just looks <laughs> weird. It looks like she's got club feet or something. Like the way I don't I don't know. I 
I don't think the dress is a hot mess, but for some reason, to me, just the way she, the way she's standing, looking sad, and you know, I, I don't. It doesn't do anything for me. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I okay. Hate, I hate doing this because I know someone's going to be doing this to me. I mean, <laughs> <those are people. laughs> um, I, I personally, I, I like things like I said before that are a little less revealing and leaving a little bit more to the imagination. I feel like the further and further we go to this, the less and less you wear. <laughs> people tend to wear on the carpets, so um, I'm not crazy about it. All right. Hot mess I, number two. Uh, hot mess number Courtney. two. There's only two options. Um, I think this is probably the event that her former boo that she just broke up with yes. appeared at and like left her at the table or something is uh, the rumor yeah. on the street. Uh, so maybe that's why she wasn't so pleased to be there. She, I'm, uh, I don't mind the dress. I just don't love it. I hate the shoes that were mm -hmm. put with it. And I actually hate the hair. Like, I usually, like, uh, that little bob can be cute, but somehow the weave didn't quite work right on that one. And so I guess I have to go hot mess. Oh. Erica. I'm 100% in agreement with you, Courtney. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I actually like the dress. I think yeah. it's kind of sexy in a way um, because it is long, although there's cutouts. It's long, so it's covering her legs. But I hate the shoes. They look like they're like the $10 platform flip flop, like platform mm -hmm. flip flop like type Charlotte shoes. Roos. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and as a result, like her dress looks too short. She just looks And then dumpy. I hate the page boy haircut on her. Yeah. I love how she usually wears her long hair, and she just looks mm -hmm. so glamorous. Yeah. And you think of Naomi Campbell as this like glamour goddess, of and so with this hair, it just doesn't work on her. And then, and yeah, and the whole attitude and the way she's posing, she just looks like she like was forced to wear this dress, forced uh -huh. to wear that wig, and almost like a little five-year-old girl's like, fine, take a picture. Exactly. <laughs> you know, like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, and maybe she, I could see her actually saying that. Fine. It's fine. Just, Why don't you take my picture? I can't, I can't do her, like, special English or it, it, it ruins the whole thing. I feel like if she put on a different shoe and she, like, she had a smile on, it, it would completely change what mm -hmm. this outfit looks like on her. And different hair. I'm not yeah. understanding the shoes. Where's the heel of it? It's, I don't know yeah, what's happening. It's kind of strange. Oh. It's a, is it a platform all the way around? Oh, she's oh, got her foot kind of turned up on its side, it looks like, right? Yeah. yeah, but yeah. Okay. It didn't work. Hated it. Hot mess. Oh, all around Sorry, agreement. Boo. Hot mess. All right. So next, we've got Victoria Beckham in New York City. And she's wearing here a quilted drop waist dress from her Victoria, Victoria Beckham Spring 2014 collection and she's just wearing a casual ponytail and black booties and her signature big black sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Phil in the booth has an opinion. Yes. <laughs> 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 oh. Everybody's like, uh. Well, you go first. I really wanted to hate it initially and I really did hate it initially. Wow. But then I kind of looked at it and was like, well, really? it's kind of interesting. <laughs> Maybe if she was pregnant. It would have been like cute for like a pregnant lady, maybe. Look at your face! I wish you could see your face. I, I think it, I I think it's called to, a moo moo. It, but. it is, a, but there was something cool about the booty, and because it's Victoria. Okay, fine. It's a hot. No, mess. it's good. Give it. To everyone had, you know, and tell their own opinion. I like the booties. Um, That's my opinion. Yeah, the booties are cute. I like the booties. Fun. All right, here's my take on this. A couple things. First of all, I think Victoria Beckham, to me, she's such a style icon. I love her style. She's got the glasses. She has the attitude. Love her line. The other thing that I love about this picture is that she's actually wearing her own clothes. Yeah. She designed how, this. Yeah. Well, well, how many times do we see celebrities, musicians, whoever, who have their own clothing lines, and they're never wearing their own stuff? Um, that's the point I wanted to make. So I love that she's actually, you know, wearing, you know, she stands behind what she does. Way she's to also see the good it. in this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I mean, for, I, there. <laughs> I think she can pull this off. I don't think the average woman could pull off a drop waist because it's going to look like a potato sack. I think she did a good job in pulling it off with the booty. Would I wear it? No. Do I think it's a hot mess? Not necessarily. It works for her. That's my take on it. Christian? Th that was a very diplomatic question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I just don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it, and I, I don't... Um, it just doesn't look like the, even the ponytail had a, you know, that any sort tired. of thought put yeah, into it. You know, it's kind of like frizzed out, and it looks like she just kind of ran out the door and threw on some heels. Um, I'm not... 
Uh, I'm not crazy about that. Uh, yeah, it looks like she was in the hospital, <laughs> and she's like in the insane asylum, and she escaped, and this is what she was wearing. And honestly, this blue is, is the new black. Yeah, no, no, not here. This is honestly one of the worst things I've ever seen her ever wear. This is the worst thing I've ever seen her wear, and I think, Gianna, you're being very nice. But what I think the bad part about this is the fact that it is her own line. Like that's what's so bad is that this is what she's putting out there for the world to wear, and. It's it's awful. Have you seen some so, of the pieces in her line? This is so bad. They're this is, stellar. I know. But this I is, know. Her, her stuff is usually amazing, and that's yeah. what I don't understand, why this is what she would choose to A, put out there, and B, to wear. Like, her items, like that dress, there's a certain dress that every celebrity is worn. It's got yeah. black, dress. or it actually yeah. comes in different colors. That's structured, like mm -hmm. three-quarter length, Kind of looks like a black halo dress. Yes, it's yeah. an amazing yeah. dress. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows about it. She has her belt. She has amazing items, and this is what she chooses to to a <laughs> sell to the world and beware like it is awful and it doesn't I'm, I'm make it kind of cool though no like, it, no just it's because like, it's bad it's a whole, new, like, it it's a whole other sensibility like for what we're used to we're used to seeing her fitted and structured exactly. and always and granted it's not the best thing ever but i think it's kind of, kind of a cool relaxed sensibility from yeah. victoria beckham which we don't ever she's, get she's not walking a red carpet in this you exactly. know i, I just I, it doesn't bother me but that's victoria beckham is always walking in a red carpet, whether she's just going to the toilet or not. We always know <laughs> Victoria Beckham always is dressed like perfection. And that's what we've come to expect from her because that is who she is. Yeah. And unfortunately, like, I'm all about having, like, a different sensibility and, like, yeah. trying something new. Mm -hmm. But this case, I just think it's just <laughs> so wrong. And I'm so disappointed because I love Victoria Erica, Beckham. Erica, tell us how you really yes, feel. Yeah. <laughs> not only anything back. Well, I mean, you Who's, said, um, you know, that this most women couldn't pull this off. But like you said, she She's putting it out there for people to buy. Yeah. So, uh. Well, I think the woman who's buying her collection, the woman who's purchasing her clothes, is a woman that could probably pull this off. You do? I do. If the you can tell, you guys pull can pull this off. off. I couldn't pull you that totally off. You totally could pull this off. I'm going to try now that we've said With a soft ponytail, like doing your hair. Yeah. She obviously didn't do her hair. Put on some earrings. And I'm all about her not doing your hair. Like, it's like she's allowed a day off not to do her hair. But, like, <laughs> dude, we're going to turn on MTV and see, like, Pregnant 16. That girl's going to be wearing it. Okay. <laughs> pregnant girl. Like. All right. We, we got to move on. What, what's up next? Okay. Um, next, we've got Ciara. And she is here at the oh, New York Fashion oh. Week. Um, and a Bernhard Wil Wilhelm Fall 2013 multicolored post dress and Christian Louboutin thigh high boots. We got our thigh high uh -huh. boots in here. So, is this supposed to be like the New York Post? Or like, what is this mocking? I'm, I'm trying to understand. Or is it just post? It's post it just New says York post. post. Yeah, it says post. Uh, okay. <laughs> like it. I, I don't understand. Is it the name of the company or what is it? No, I thought no, it was no, for no, the New York Post. The the I think it's for New York Post. Yeah, it's like a graphic. It's like that. It, it, and this was in like it's not so much in anymore, but the whole graphic comic book. I mean, yeah. actually, it is a little bit. Yeah, part they still of, are. Part of actually, uh, Philip Lim's like 3.0 target line. He's gonna have some of those graphic yep. type items. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess it is still it's in just style. A method so. of having pattern. Uh, mm -hmm. I like the boots. Yeah, I think she looks ridiculous. Oh man, gosh, you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I do. I think she looks ridiculous. I like it. I like. I like. Deanna, the your face. <laughs> She's you like, what? I think she looks cool. Like, I like the boots a lot. I like the the. I mean, her hair looks great with the outfit. I think that I would like it to be a little bit more fitted. But it's like, I think it's just like a cool dress. Like, it's. I would see her walking down the street in some platform sneakers in that dress. Like, I. I think she looks cool. I just feel like her style is all over the place. It I feel is like all I over feel like place. she doesn't really know what her style is, you know what I mean? I don't know if she's has a stylist or if she's dressing herself. I don't know, but I think she's uh. one of the I feel like this today and that's what she puts on and it doesn't matter that it doesn't sort of line up for things mm -hmm. for her because one minute she's like flowing elegant sheer like dress mm -hmm. on whatever mm -hmm. uh, what just happened the MTV awards MTV, or something mm -hmm. and then you know she's doing like a graphic like I would see Rihanna sport in that before I would initially think Sierra doing it but you know she's just trying what she can try hmm. Erica Corner, I'm with you. I like it. Thank you. I, I like it. Yay. I do. Yeah. I think it's. I think it's. It's cool. It's. It's. It's on trend. Um, God, I think 
every time we see her, she gets her face and it just gets more and more beautiful. Like yeah, she is, gorgeous. her hair her, and the way she has it, so relaxed and beautiful. Yeah. And I think it looks really cool because I think she's has like the whole laid back, cool vibe going on with how it's styled. I like it. I think it's cute. I think it's it's fashionable. And two trendy. for two. Christian, what about you? Did you? Oh, you I don't mean, get I, it, you yeah, said? I like the boots. I don't really understand what the post is all about. I think she looks fine. Um, if I saw her walking down the street, I would think she looked cute. The fact that it's, you know, kind of a carpet picture, I don't know if I'd wear that there, but, um, yeah, I think she's fine. She's cute. So we kind of sh- got three hots. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> but she kinda stands alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so up next, we've got our fashion favorite, Rihanna. And she's also at New York Fashion Week, and she's here at the opening ceremonies. At opening ceremonies, first runway showing. Uh, so opening ceremony, for those who aren't familiar, they're a line that's been around since 2002, um, but they uh, had their first runway show this past week. And uh, Rihanna is wearing a Zach Poston dress uh, with, black tennis shoes and a mullet hairpiece <laughs> as well as their signature red uh, ru- uh, ruru riri ru- 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 lips and um, a uh, choker and black sheer tights what do you guys think I don't like that at all. <laughs> no. I don't like it either, but I will point out her shoes. That's a big trend are these lug soles. So I feel oh, like hate them. it's really I ugly. don't know. It, it's very kind of clunky and masculine, but I think, you know, we, we Rihanna comes up a lot here on the show. And I think we've established that she's truly becoming like a, a fashion, oh. you know, a, well, no, a fashion icon. You know, she's always changing up her look and making sure she's wearing the latest this and the latest that. You know, she's becoming a little trendsetter, mm-hmm. I think. So I, I don't care for this, but I, she's she's got a lot of trends covered, you know, in, in, one, outfit, <laughs> in one outfit, you know, so. Yeah. Hot mess. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That little flippy skirt in them shoes. Yeah. You know, it's, and the tight and those stockings. It's, like, fr- it's, Franken- it's really? Frankensteinish. No, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah, it's really goth. I, I, yeah. I don't really like that. It is. I think it's awful. And, it's, it's, and no one talked about the mullet hairpiece. <laughs> well, we could never get past the skirt, past the shoes, and the tights. Exactly. Yeah. We, we got know, stuck. Now, when you say mullet, is it is it a wig that she's it's wearing, or is it? Oh, it's in the like, back. Like okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. So uh, mm. business in the front and party in the back. Yeah. That's. <laughs> Yeah, not cute. Disaster. And I, up until now, I almost felt like Rihanna could do no wrong, but <gasps> but here she did do very wrong. Everything about it is mm-hmm. so wrong. And like usually, I think Rihanna can get away with being kind of yeah. different in her styling and and kind of take risks. And um, this risk did not pay work. off. No. Awful. Nope, 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 nope. But so bad. But I kind of get it. It's Fashion Week, and that's what this whole week is about. It's events. It's parties. You're getting photographed. You know. I, I, under, I think it's horrible, but I get it. I You're understand getting it. photographed. It's just ugly. Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I you are. I, I used to attend a lot of these shows back in the day, and that was like the highlight to not only the show, because the show was very quick. The show was like maybe mm-hmm. seven to ten minutes long. But the biggest part of all of this is, is, is seeing, you know, who's wearing what and who's on the red carpet and the street style. That's a big part of Fashion Week. So I, I understand it. I still think she looks horrible, but I understand it. Go back to the leather overalls. <laughs> <laughs> those the Even that jersey dress we saw her wearing. Oh, last week, with yeah. The umbrella. Oh, my gosh. Okay, last but not least, we've got Rita Ora, and she is at the DKNY 25th birthday bash that was held in New York City this week. And, um, yeah, she's wearing a, um, oh, where is my notes? Well, she's wearing a, oh, she's wearing a DKNY uh, spring 2014 white blazer uh, and bandana print top and matching shorts that were fresh off of the DKNY runway. Beautiful. I, I I actually really like it. And I like that her pants, it's like a dip teak. Do you guys know what that is? Like mm-hmm. where one side mirrors the other. Yeah. I, I kinda I like it. I think she looks kinda cool and funky and and refined. I don't know. I like I it. I like it and I wouldn't mm-hmm. have thought it was DKNY. Yeah, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have either. Which was yeah. strange to me. But yeah, mm-hmm. I think she looks great. Mm-hmm. The blazer makes sense that it's DKNY. Yeah. I don't know about the top yeah. and the shorts. Yeah, I'm surprised it's DKNY as well. Mm-hmm. It looks yeah, a little tribal too. Yeah. I think it's she's going with like the whole masculine thing with her hair. Um, mm-hmm. Like it just to me looks like a, a masculine look, which I think she pulls it off well. I, I actually would have liked to have seen it without the jacket. Mm-hmm. I think it would have looked to me more 
I would have liked it better. And you could have really seen the whole outfit. Because the outfit itself, the top and the shorts, is actually kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And it's a what cool are those, look. What are the sleeves like on it? I mean, yeah, I wonder if it's sleeveless. I think it's sleeveless. Mm -hmm. I think it's sleeveless, mm -hmm. but I don't recall seeing a mm -hmm. picture mm -hmm. of her without and it. And then she has a hat that she's holding, too. So oh, she's going kind of okay. like a men's wear-y kind of thing, which mm -hmm. DKNY is, is known for those structured pieces, mm -hmm. so it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I would have liked to seen it without the jacket. But I think the hair and makeup looks cool. I don't know. Rita Ora is one of those people that her style is still all over the place. She's still figuring it mm -hmm. out, I think. Yeah. I think so. She is. She's transforming. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So that's it for Hot or Hot Mess. We didn't get into any battles. Yay. Let's go back. Uh, all right. Well, let's see what's going on in the social media world. Well, what do you got, Courtney? Really quick. We had two great events, obviously, going on. Fashion Week starting out. We had June Ambrose at all the shows. Stylist extraordinaire. She was all over the place with her buddy, Jay Manuel. And blogger, what is his name, Bobby? Brian Boy. Sorry. Brian, Brian Boy. Boy. Yeah. And uh, so June was wearing this burgundy fish scale sequin pajama top. And you can't really tell what they're sitting down but it's a very like light and flowy sort of blazer but not mm -hmm. and then she had on a black lace short that literally looked like pajamas or underwear oh. which were interesting and an interesting trend for her to go with and uh, Jay of course is wearing his bright red blazer <laughs> and some mustard colored slacks they look very like Neon yellow in that picture, but they weren't quite. It looks that very yellow. Ronald McDonald's. Ronald, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and Brian Boy was sporting just the regular crew tee and some really short shorts, and a cobalt clutch looking lovely at the Diesel Show. Um, next up, we had Joan Smalls. Actually, she was at the DKNY. Uh, oh, sorry, that's Sierra we have pulled up. And Sierra went out to party after she wore her post dress. <laughs> and, uh, she also wore a, another dress where she wore these boots. The Christian Louboutin boots were everywhere. And of course, she put back on the leather trend to spend the night out partying after she was done. I like this look better. Yeah, that's <laughs> that, that, that's a, I like that look better, too. Mm -hmm. That looks like who she actually yeah, exactly. is. Exactly. But even though the post look was cute. All right. Next up, we got Joan Smalls. She was also at the DKNY event with Rita Ora standing there. And she had all of her girls with her, too. We got Emmy Rossum. We had Carly Kloss flanking on the other side and Cobalt, all of them wearing DKNY. And uh, Joan Smalls was actually wearing that whole crop top trend in a whole real naked way, I mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I didn't, again, it, these are, they're all wearing DKNY. Carly and Joan were hosting the 25th anniversary party. Mm -hmm. And I was actually surprised that that was DKNY. All of those things look so different. Yes, they're yeah, so they different. Yeah, really they And I was just like, wow. Well, are, are they current? Is that, are they all current I DKNY? don't have dates on which uh, lines they were with, huh. but they I would are imagine it's probably DKNY. part of spring 2014 for the shows. It's not yeah. all together. But yeah. either way, Emmy, I totally bought. I was yeah, like, oh, yeah, that, I could see that. But I, I was very confused with the Joan Smalls outfit, for sure. And well, it is interesting to note, though, for DKNY, she's got, like, five different lines. Mm -hmm. She's got DKNY jeans. She's got Pure. She's got regular Donna Care in New York. So she's got, like, a lot of different lines. To spread it out. So, you know. It's different all different. They're points. all different women, mm -hmm. I think. And yeah. that's kind of cool that you can go to her for those. And that's always been types. DKNY's motto, too, to, like, appeal to every woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... So they did beautiful. And the next big event that was going on, we didn't get to talk about much, was the Toronto Film Festival, where lots of celebrities and people were at this week, and one being Anika Noni Rose, promoting her film, and she was wearing a piano monochrome key print dress. Um, it was by Babs Ada Craw. I don't know if I said that correctly. And that's from Gingham Doll of London. And it was just like a fitted wiggle v-neck dress. I don't really love the hair. I don't really love the dress, but She's trying. <laughs> She's <laughs> trying. It's funny. There was an article in Huffington Post about you know all the celebrities that ditched Fashion Week, yeah. you know, for mm -hmm. the Toronto Film Festival, and it was a lot of people that you might not have expected, you know, who who you normally see front row, but who went to the film festival mm -hmm. instead. So. They were there. And last but not least, like the superstar of the Toronto Film Festival, because she was Love. everywhere <laughs> in like 800 different outfits. Um, one just to note, just because we talked about the green. Uh, earlier, Ms. Lala Anthony wore a green lambskin uh, dress by the Row Quarry, and it's an $859 dress that's available right now, and it was seersucked to her body in wow. ways that <laughs> I can't even explain, and she wore this gold belt. And she had a couple of other looks. She's wearing the crop look again with the blue dress, but she was doing the same, almost the same length 
for almost every single one of her dresses and a very similar silhouette for she every outfit great. she wore. And she looked great. Yeah, yeah, she looks good. Yeah, so she was working it all over Toronto while everybody else was at Fashion Week. God, she makes me want to work out. Oh, yeah, she's, she's, she's gotten it in, she's tucked it in, and, you know, she looks she's a full woman, but still keeping it tight. So mm -hmm. congratulations, That's Lala, good. on the new film that she has coming out and having a great time at Toronto Film Festival. All right. Well, that's been another episode. Episode? Episode. episode. Yeah. Episode. <laughs> of, uh... <laughs> Ooh, what was that? That's my bad. <laughs> well, Halloween is next month, so we got to yeah, start with the right? costumes. Uh, it's well, coming. thanks so much to our guest, <laughs> Christian. Christian. Petri? Petri? Petri, like the dish. Petri, Petri like dish. the dish. Thanks so Petri. much for uh, coming in and chatting fashion with <laughs> us. <laughs> Thanks for having me. You guys taught me a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so where can we find everybody? Oh, okay. You can find me. I'm your host, Erica Garcia Rojas. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at I am EGR. And you can find me on Instagram at Christian Petrie and on Twitter at Christian Petrie underscore. And Bounty Hunter, what is that released in? Bounty just, Killer. Bounty um, Killer. Yeah, Shit, no, it's sorry. All right. Everyone does it, um, <laughs> including us sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, yes, yeah, video on demand. Also, select theaters right now, and um, then DVDs will be out for sale shortly. Awesome. Very cool. Courtney, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Stuart Scarlet, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram at BHL Fashion Four One One. And you guys can find me, Deanna Vaughn, on Instagram and Twitter at It's Me, Deanna B. Thanks, guys, for tuning in with us this week. Make sure you catch us next week. More fashion. And don't forget to like us on iTunes. Tell your friends. We are one of the top-rated fashion beauty podcasts out there. So keep that going. And thank you so much for listening and your ratings and all that. So thank you. <laughs> and all that. And, and all that. Bye. <laughs> From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, Dario Kristen and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for tuning in to the Black Hollywood Live Network. If you have questions or comments, tweet us at BHL Online or email us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. For more exclusive content, visit blackhollywoodlive.com. This has been a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network. Hollywood Redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals. 